we're going to talk about the equipment we will use for this uh, sound recordings. First of all, we have the sound recorder, of course, where we are going to record everything. I took uh, the definition from Wikipedia. What is sound recording and reproduction? Uh, it's an electrical, mechanical, electronic or digital inscription and recreation of sound waves, such as spoken voice, singing, instrumental music or sound effects. Nowadays, uh, like the most uh, common um, inscription way is digital, like almost like all of these recorders that we are using nowadays are digital. Uh, and yeah, like we record any kind of sound. So here are the concepts I talked to you about, like we still have to go through a little bit of theory before you, we go to the practice, because uh, it's very important to at least have a, like a main idea what these things are. And of course, I totally invite you to look for more information about these topics on the internet. We were already mentioning the preamps, like in the cameras. The preamps are like the um, part of the equipment that is in charge of bringing the mic level signal up to line level for use with professional equipment. Because uh, the microphones produce a signal that is very low, so it has like to be increased in order like to be like heard and used and processed, and that's uh, the main function of the preamps. There are many different price ranges and of course like the quality also like varies from 30 euros to 600 euros difference. Uh, most of the, no, most of, I would say almost every audio interface or a mixer has already preamps built in. So, but uh, like in the best, uh, like professional music recording studios, uh, they have external preamps that are like just dedicated for this um, for this job inside the studio. So they are like their quality. It's like really defining for the quality of the sound. Then we have uh, phantom power. That's a, a DC voltage that powers a condenser microphone. Like condenser microphones need this phantom power in order to work. The standard value is 48 volts DC. Uh, sample rate is the number of samples of audio recorded every second. And the bit depth is the number of possible amplitude values we can record for each sample. As I say, we will like develop more these concepts in a second. Um, let's start with some uh, considerations when uh, working with phantom power. Generally, only condenser microphones need phantom power. So if you are not sure what kind of microphone you are working with, try to find information either on the manual they come with or on the internet and find out if they need uh, phantom or not. Only apply phantom if it needs it. Uh, like most of the dynamic microphones won't get damaged if you put phantom, but it's still better to be safe. Lavalier microphones with wireless systems usually don't need phantom power, and if they need, they will get it directly from the transmitter. So you don't need to apply phantom power like from the recorder or from the mixer. Very important, do not apply phantom power to any other device, like not to not plug uh, line instruments into input jacks with phantom power because it can definitely damage your equipment. So please try to think about it before. In recorders, for example, like the MixPre 10, when you choose what kind of uh, signal you are going to record, like between mic and line, for example, if you choose line, then it automatically disables the option of giving phantom power, which I find like very intelligent and also like very uh, like rescuing uh, life of lots of equipment uh, that uh, would otherwise maybe get damaged if you forget that. And uh, one recommendation also is like to turn phantom power off or deactivate the channel in the recorder before plugging and unplugging a condenser microphone. The reason for this is like uh, your microphone might not get damaged, but um, your ears <laughs> or the ears of your audience. 
So if you have the, your headphones on and you plug and unplug, it produces like this, like a very loud pop, pop that can like blow your ears. Or if you are like working in a concert and you do the same, then it's also like a very annoying and loud pop that will disturb the audience. So think about it, like always uh, turning or deactivating the channel before plugging and unplugging. Now we go to the next concept that is sample rate. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, we are recording nowadays not an analog like the analog signal. We are recording in digital media, and uh, as you know, like computers, they understand zeros and ones. So um, there needs to be a conversion from analog to this digital form to be stored. The sampling rate or sample rate refers to the number of samples of audio recorded every second. So, of course, the higher the sample rate, that means that the most samples that you will have, like the more similar your digital signal is going to be to the analog signal. And um, uh, of course, like also the better quality if, yeah, if it's more similar. So there are some standards like for recording, you can record however you want. You can use like a high sample rate quality to record, uh, but there are some standards to deliver. Like in the music, for example, the standard was set by the CD, like in the 80s. Um, and then uh, it was set that it was like uh, 44, comma one kilohertz and 16 bits because that was the maximum that uh, the CD uh, would have like also the the size of the files and everything and uh, um, the maximum quality it could reproduce. So even so nowadays we can uh, like reproduce through the internet with other qualities. Unfortunately, it is still like a standard for lots of music platforms. Uh, that are still like working with this quality which from all the options is like the smallest lowest quality then there is like the standard in the film industry for video uh, and professional audio that is 48 kilohertz 24 bits um, that's also like uh, the sample frequency I also work with I record with always like uh, when working with video and uh, it's very good quality. Yeah, as I said, it's a standard. Then comes 96 kilohertz. Um, and this is the one recommended for recording audio that it's gonna have a lot of processing afterwards. Uh, that's uh, like the usual case when you are recording, for example, sound effects for libraries, for sound libraries, because you know that uh, these sounds are like meant to be like hardly processed later, for example, with time stretching, like making the 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 short sound m like way longer or like pitch up or pitch down. And uh, those are like very heavy process and the most um, like the highest quality you have there with the sample rate, like more like fidelity to the original signal, then the more possibilities you will have to to play afterwards in, in post production process. And like recorders, they even offer also like 192 kilohertz. This is not a standard for anything, <laughs> but I mean, uh, if you want to use it, then why not? If you can hear any difference, respect. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, like if you want to have more information and understand, for example, where these numbers come from, why are exactly like these values there, um, I totally recommend that you go to Isotop. I will uh, here down on the presentation is also like the reference where it comes from. They really explain in a very simple way, like you can really understand what it is and where these numbers come from and why it is important and everything. It's I totally recommend it. The to have a lecture there. Now we go to audio resolution or bit depth. And uh, it is what determines the dynamic range of an audio file. It's measured in bits, 16, 24 or 32 bits. And uh, this is like, this determines like the, how many amplitude values can be stored on each sample. 
and uh, it, it determines like how loud, how similar <laughs> it is like the digital loudness to the um, analog loudness. And for example, like also the higher the number, then the more possible amplitude values that we will have. And that gives us like more dynamic range. That is like we can record like lower signals. And then in the editing software, we can make them like, for example, 30 dB louder. And we still won't have a lot of noise, uh, like the noise floor, it won't come up. And uh, in the example that you see here, like this graphic here on the right, what they show is like, for example, they recorded like a very, very, very loud signal, distorted signal with the recorded, uh, and they recorded once in 24 bit and once in 32 bit. And the one in 24 bit, you see that when they reduce the volume in the software, you, you see that the signal is like this, is like straight, is like all totally distorted, like there's no uh, like way to rescue it at all. But when they record with 32 bit and they put the volume down, it like that's what they are like advertising sound devices. You can still totally like recover the recording and uh, the distortion and everything like shouldn't be there anymore. But of course, it doesn't depend only on the recorder that you are using, but also on the microphones that you are using, because uh, uh, even though the recorder will have like infinite amplitude values and you can record as low as low or as loud as you want you still have like the microphone on this chain and and they don't have infinite values so just like don't rely on the 32 bits of the recorder take in account that you also have to think on the rest of the equipment that you are using but definitely like i totally recommend uh recording on 32 bit you have like where, way more possibilities later to work with amplitudes without so much noise or distortion. Now we come to something very important also like the audio levels. There are two different scenarios for talking about audio levels. One is when we are talking about recording levels. That means when we are on the set during the shooting and the delivery levels that's after post-production when you mix and everything because there things are gonna get louder but for the recording they need to be a little bit softer so the recording levels are usually at an average of minus 12 dbs being the lowest minus 20 of course we are talking about dialogue and speech and this kind of stuff like not nature or something yeah like we are in our uh, like educational or like reportages, uh, we are like dealing mostly with uh, the voice. Avoid clipping. Never ever hit zero while recording audio. Of course, some sounds will like hit zero. For example, if I'm talking here and I suddenly decide to clap, then it's gonna blow it up. But it's that's not gonna be voice. And of if if uh, hit the table. Those are going to be very loud sounds, but uh, like the main um, like principle is like the voice of the person that you are recording. It should never, ever, ever hit zero. And uh, your highest peaks, for example, when the person decides, like gets very excited and starts like talking louder or suddenly laughs uh, like really loud, then you should like the peaks should be around minus six. Most of the recorders usually show default numbers on their meters to help you know where you are. Like these are some examples of numbers. Some show different numbers, but still like that you know that you are on the range. That's the case of the Zoom uh, H4N, for example, or the Zoom A4. They usually show and most of the sound devices also. Uh, unfortunately, the sound devices mix spread 10 it shows only the levels of the of the stereo mix going out like a left and right but not of the single channel like uh, on if you are on the main screen and you want to see like how each channel is doing then you're gonna see just like bars moving like with colors like the green yellow and red so somehow you gotta get like a feeling for it very 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 important always record uncompressed and clean audio. 
All the process can come later in post-production in the editing software, but like for the recording, we need to get the voice as clean and neutral and natural as it is. So don't go for the filters and for the compressors or that kind of stuff, like they are in many recorders, but I don't recommend like to really use them. Like maybe like the low pass filter, but like really low, like are 40 hertz or something like that. <laughs> 